All right, Shalom. I'd like to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakudash. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's whole four elect scattered abroad, teaching his word is sincerity and truth. Shalom. All right. Um, you know, just this is a this gonna be a quick one. And uh, I was just in conversation. You know, Jake sleep, man. You know, Jake, you know, they think that the Lord, you know, is slack. You know, they think that the Lord is taking his time when it comes to bringing his kingdom on the earth. You got some Jake that don't even believe in the Lord at all. You know, Jake is so destroyed, you know, mentally, spiritually, you know, physically because of our sins. So we need the Lord, man. And as the scriptures say here in 2 Peter 3 and 9, which I'm going to read, it says the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. All right. Because people are impatient. They don't have any faith no more in the Lord. You know, they don't even uh, have the knowledge of the Lord. As the scriptures say in um, Hosea, the Lord said, um, because thou uh, have uh, uh, rejected knowledge, he will also reject thee, you know. Hey, he said his people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. All right. Jake is, you know, destroyed on all levels because they won't seek the knowledge of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, which is their creator. OK, which is their savior, which is the name of the father is Yahweh and the son's name is Yahweh Shai. You know, so you're destroyed for the lack of knowledge. You know, how can you even, um, you know, claim that you even believe in God if you do? But you don't even have any acknowledgement of the God that you worship, you know. So Jake destroyed on all levels, man. So I'm just going to quickly get into these scriptures. And um, Lord willing, I hope you're edified. This is 2 Peter 3 and 9. It says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us were not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. All right. So the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, because if you, you know, read the scriptures or you listen to the prophets and you and you actually uh, listen with a sincere ear to learn, you would know that prophecies. OK, is it, it comes in this time. All right. According to what Ecclesiastes three and one, you know, you will understand that the Lord does things in seasons. Okay, so is this is Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. All right, so when it's a time for us to be delivered from our enemies, it's going to be in that time, the prophecies are going to be fulfilled. Excuse me. The prophecies are going to be fulfilled so that what? We can be delivered in that season, in that time. All right, the purpose for us being delivered. Okay, so everything happens here throughout uh through the Lord, the Heavenly Father, all right? The Most High is time. He's not slack, you know? It's because you don't have understanding of the scriptures, you know, nor do you believe, all right? And, and nor do you have patience, you know? So the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. What is his promise? Ultimately, for us to have a kingdom, all right? Yahweh Shai and lay his life down and spilt his blood for nothing, all right? As some men count slackness. Now, before I even go on, I just want to get the word slack, you know, because the Lord is not slack. Right now, you have a pestilence that's going across the face of the earth, which we all know is called the coronavirus, which been here for many years. But people are dying. All right. People are getting sick. You know, this is not a coincidence. You know, it's, it's because the Heavenly Father allowed it. All right. Does it matter who created it? The Heavenly Father created it because if he created man, OK, to create an instrument that's still of the Heavenly Father's work. All right. So the Most High takes all the credit. All right. So anyway, <clears throat> the word slack, it means to delay, be slow, to render slowly, retard. Um, it says to be long, to tarry, lauder. All right. It says to delay, be slack, Terry. And the Lord is not, it's not slack. You know, things have to play out in the season. You know, the most high is doing this, man. We in a Lord's movie, man. You can't get to the movie theater 
and and require the CDN when the movie just started, you know, or the movie's in the it's in the middle of the movie. You can't fast forward the movie theater because you personally want the movie to hurry up. You know, all of the elect of the Howard Bashim Howard Shai uh, pray for fewer days in this place, you know. And of course, they want, you know, the, the Lord to speed things up. But guess what? It's the Heavenly Father's uh, orders, if he would or not. And the scriptures do tell us that the Lord have spe uh, speeding up the days for the elect's sake, unless no flesh should be saved. So the days are speeding up, but just not on, maybe <laughs> it's just not on, um, you know, it's not on your time, all right? The Lord said one day to the Lord is a thousand years, all right? The Most High said, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither my ways your ways. A lot of you guys don't have understanding. You don't really believe. You can't have the understanding if you don't even believe. You know, when you come and question, um, you know, the scriptures with an ulterior motor, you know, not questioning sincerely to learn, you're never going to get this truth because it ain't for you. This word is for the elect, man. So the Lord is not slack. He's not tarrying. Okay. To be long, the Lord is not taking long. You know. To render slowly, the Lord is not rendering slowly. He's not delaying. The Most High is on time. Let me see here. Uh, right, so let's go back, man. It says, uh, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word. So why is it long suffering to us word? Because, you know, we're in the flesh and it feels as though, you know, each month, each year go by, you know, you say to yourself, well, how long? Okay. You know, you're in the flesh. You age by the day. You age by the years. And, you know, if the Most High is uh, requiring a certain prophecy to come in a certain time, it doesn't have to be in your time. But we do know, you know, by all of these things that did happen already and it's going to happen, you know, and everything that's put in motion, we can clearly tell you that we at the end of this thing, man. You know, Esau don't have but much time left. And that's by what? Reading the prophecies examining examining the time and time in which we live in it you know it says um but it's long suffering to us were not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance and that's reminding me of john the baptist didn't john the baptist teach of repentance and that all is talking about all of israel all right because in order to be an israelite you have to be born from the seed of your father and real quick so probably a little off topic, but I'm going to get it. This is, uh, well, it's on topic. It's not off topic. Just a precept. Isaiah 46 and 3, hearken unto me, O house of Jacob. All right, who is Jacob? Jacob is the forefather of the 12 tribes of Israel. All right. It says, hearken unto me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel. And if you know, you should know that Jacob's name was also turned changed to Israel, all right? It says, which are born by me from the belly, which are carried from the womb, all right? So all Israelites are born of the Most High according to their seed of their father. There's a certain line, a certain chosen, chosen line that the Lord have dealt with and only gonna deal with, and that's through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all right? So let me go back. So it says, but that all should come to repentance, man. You know, repentance is changing your ways from wickedness and following the ways of the Lord. You know, it's a must that you acknowledge your sins before the Lord and that you strive in righteousness, you know, each day to uh, prove your faith toward Yahweh Barsham Yahweh Shah. That's a must. You can't just say that, oh, I believe I'm an Israelite. I like that knowledge. Uh, yeah, I like that history. That sounds good. Yeah, I'm an Israelite, but you're not walking in the ways of an Israelite. What good is it to know then? What good is it for you to know your, your true identity and then you don't practice, you know, your customs? You don't practice the ways and how you manage yourself toward the Lord. It says repentance. Let's check something. Okay. 
repentance, a change of mind. All right. You having a change of mind and what? Let me not walk down that path. All right. Let me not walk down that path in which I was doing because I have learned that the Lord said you can't do that. So, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this because this way is what the Lord required, required for me to do. And this is how I please him. It says, as it appears to one who repents of a purpose he has formed or of something he has done. All right. So it's basically changing from being wicked into walking in righteousness, man. You know, you have to make that decision. You have to sacrifice. OK. Can't be given into your flesh. You know, your flesh is warring against your spirit. The scriptures say the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. All right. So it says, but that all, which is all of Israel who believe, okay, should come to repentance. It says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heaven shall pass away with the great noise and the element shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. All right. So, you know, this is clearly telling you that, you know, if you don't repent, then guess what? You're going to die by the hands of the Lord, man. You're going to die by the, by, the, by, the, by the destruction and the wrath of the Lord. And it says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. So go ahead and, you know, do what you do. You don't believe. Why even argue over the scriptures? All right. Go, go your way. You know, have fun. You know, it says the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night because that's perfect. Because that deals with what? Prophecy. You not believing is still a part of prophecy. All right. You just one of those two thirds. All right. That can't believe in the scriptures. Don't got the faith. The Lord not dealing with you. And the Lord going to come like a thief unto you. The scripture says the Lord will come as a thief in the night. All right. And that, that has to be fulfilled. You know, not everybody is going to be woken to this truth. So it says, in the which the heavens shall pass away with great noise. And the heavens is talking about the earth. You know, really particular, the land of North America. All right. Because this is the land in which the Lord called the lake of fire. So it says, in which the heavens shall pass away with the great noise. What is that great noise? By thermonuclear missiles, man. Okay. There's going to be missiles shot off in the Third World War, which is the end of all wars, which they call Armageddon. It says the element shall melt with fervent heat. So that means everything here is going to be melted away. How are you going to survive? All right. What you going to dig into the earth and go into a bunkie? You know, no, them earth, the, the them missiles is going to dig up and uh, reap new soil in this earth. All right. You know how you take a fork when you farm, when you're gardening and you, you, you preparing the, 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 the dirt, you write, you ripping it, you know, tearing it from from within to bring up that good soil well that's what the missile is going to do to this land okay this land in which you call north america all right the missiles is going to dig up that dirt okay it's going to bring forth new soil all right and which is going to be saying because <laughs> the lord said that this place is you know no man will be able to inhabit so it says and the elements shall melt with fervent heat and the earth also and the works therein shall be burned up all right, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what man of person are ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness. So it's a must that you, you know, have your conversation, meaning how you manage yourself, you know, in godliness. While the world right now is in wickedness, you know, you can go outside to the corner store and you see nothing but witch, witch, witchcraft, man. You see uh, uh, nothing but uh, but wicked men and women. All right. Now this word conversation goes into the Greek. The Strong's G391. Anastrophe. Anastrophe. Manner of life, conduct, behavior, deployment. Deployment. All right. So there you go. Behavior, conversation. You know, you're supposed to behave yourself in a certain way, a certain way, not in a Gentile way. Not in a Greek way, all right? Being a Greek is not acceptable according to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. That is of a Esau's culture, Esau's Edom culture, all right? I don't have to tell you what Greeks do, but they live by their way. That's not the way of the Lord.
So it says, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person are ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the Most High, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fern heat. See? Nevertheless, we account, we according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. All right, so that's what the elect is looking for. A new heaven, a new earth, with the which wherein dwelleth righteousness, not wickedness. All right, you women ain't gonna be jumping from man to man. There won't be no homosexuality, transsexuals walking freely through the streets. Okay, there won't be no, uh, uh, you know, uh, usury. You know, there won't be no uh, uh, G GMO foods, genetically modified organisms, all right, splicing cells and things of that nature. There won't be no more drugs. There won't be no more guns. There won't be no more Jake killing each other. You know, I can go on and on and on, man. So it says, wherefore, beloved, seeing that they seeing that ye look for such things, because these are the things that the elect look for, be diligent. That ye be that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. So in order for you to keep your faith, you got to be diligent. All right. All right. Because you can't just say you have faith with no works. You got to be constant and consistent in the work, you know, for the Lord to continue to keep giving you that gift, which is the gift of faith. So it says, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. You know, so the Most High won't charge your sins against you. May the Most High, you know, forgive you for your sins, man. You know, so that's basically the point. I wanted to really just tackle nine, like I said, you know, conversation. And Jake, 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 Jake and lost it, man. They going, man. You know, and it's just a matter of time that the Lord continue to fulfill, you know, the rest of these prophecies. And we out of here, man. You know, it's a lot going on and it ain't stopping. We're in the month of March, the beginning. You know, I wonder what the Lord got in store for this month. Maybe a new a new virus circulate. Maybe martial law. <laughs> you know, maybe, you know, they start quarantining here in America. Maybe sedition among men. Okay, maybe uh, more rioting. Hey, you know, these things are going to happen. And matter of fact, before I go, because uh, that word slack, you know, gets into tarrying. Just to prove that the Lord is not tarrying and not slack concerning his promise. You know, I get the famous scripture that we all know, which is Habakkuk 2 and, and uh, 1. It says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I'm reproved. All right. And the Lord Yahweh answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that read of it. So Lord ain't slack. All right. That vision represents prophecy. That, that that vision represents that time and purpose in the season, okay? It says to make it plain upon tables that he may run that read of it, all right? Verse 3, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. And it says, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Meaning that when this thing do go down, it's going to come fast, man. It's going to come. Boop, boop, boop. You know, it's not going to stop raining. You know, just as it start raining, you feel a little drizzling. You feel a little drops. You know that, you know, that rain is going to come down. You see them gray clouds. You know that that rain is going to come down. So what you do, you know, you might get in your car. You might try to get home quicker. You know, you don't stand outside. You know it's going to start pouring. You don't want to get caught in that rain. So when that rain do start coming, it's, it's pouring down, man, like cats and dogs, as they say. So how much more these prophecies, man? How much more in this latter end of the end of Esau's kingdom? All right? Because Jacob is truly up next to that followeth, as the scripture says in 2nd Edges 6. So I hope this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rakakudash. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to the Lord's hopeful elect. Shalom.